I said this morning that how we interpret things, the meaning we come up with is based on what we focus on. But even what we focus on is usually based on some of our beliefs. And people that are successful are people who develop beliefs so that when the inevitable challenges happen, where people do things like, you know, don't meet your expectations, which, is that going to happen again? Yes or no? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, is it going to happen more than once? Yes or no? Yes. It's part of life. So part of what you do is you begin to like share your expectations in advance and see if people can meet them, if they agree, and if that works for them, instead of just expecting everybody to know what you expect. The other element, though, is if we can begin to adopt some belief systems that help us to interpret people's behaviors, then we'll have a lot less upset. So let me offer you five or six core beliefs that people who seem to have great relationships seem to have in common, beliefs about human beings and how human beings behave and how they communicate. And those beliefs are the following. Number one, write down, people are not their behaviors. People are not their behaviors. We're not just merely our behaviors. If people do something, if somebody does something, that is not who they are. It's what they're doing in this moment. Now, if you need evidence to really believe this, just look at your own life. How many of you have ever done something that really isn't you? You did something after it, you're like, ah, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I said that. That's not me. How many have ever done this? So when somebody does something, instead of going, how could they do this to me? Or that person did this, therefore they're a bad person. What you really want to do is say, I don't agree with their behavior, but I still love the person. Same thing is true, by the way, in helping your children to make changes. If you want to be a great parent, you don't correct your child. You correct the behavior. It's very important that we separate behavior from who a person really is. Hopefully we're a lot more than just what people notice physically about what we do. Hopefully we're spiritual beings, right? That we're, what we are is a lot more than what we demonstrate at times. But we've got to remember that. So when somebody does something, you go, they're a bad person. They're not a bad person. They've got some bad behavior and your interpretation of it at least, okay? People are not their behaviors. Get upset, get upset with the behavior. Separate behavior from people. So if I'm giving feedback to my kids, I can get real intense. I can come in and say, you know what, this does not work for me. What you just did there, that doesn't work. That behavior is totally unacceptable. You know it. we got clear agreements on that. And I love you, but I will not settle for that behavior. And I know that you're much better than this, so I need you to make this shift, or you won't do that. Okay? But I correct the behavior, not the person. Otherwise, the person feels really beat up. You can separate the two clearly. Second core belief. There is always, yes always, a positive intent behind all behavior. There is always a positive intent behind all behavior, even behavior that looks negative. There's always a positive intent behind someone's behavior. So let's take the example of the lady here who was willing to share earlier. She said, you know, this person, she's trying to communicate with this man and she can't get through and he does these different things and none of us know the content of what he does, but he does certain things that really upset her, obviously. Now, I don't know what things those are, but let's say he spoke harsh or he will not get close to you. I'm saying there's a positive intent to him not getting close to her. Is that because she's a bad person? No, what I'm saying is his behavior is trying to do something good. And what it's trying to do is protect him from pain or give him some pleasure. And I would hallucinate he's probably trying to protect him from some what? From some what? Pain. How many would agree, probably guess if we were going to hallucinate, that's probably it. So the reality is maybe he's been hurt before. Or before he gave his heart and soul and then that person left him. Or before he did that and it didn't work out and he felt disappointed. And what a lot of us do is to try and protect ourselves from pain, we do dumb things that make our life even more painful. So instead of making him wrong and say, he's such a shallow person, he doesn't commit, he's horrible, what you might say is, God, I massively disagree with his behavior. And I wonder what the intent is in his subconscious mind. What is it this brain is trying to get him by being this way? All right, maybe it's trying to protect him. Maybe I need to show him he doesn't have to be protected by me, that I'm not going to hurt him. Does this make sense? So what about somebody trying to commit suicide? Is there a positive intent there? Committing suicide? You better believe there is. That person's brain is saying, you know something? <laughs> being dead would be less painful than being here. That's not true, but that's what they think in the moment, and that's why they try and actually commit suicide. Somebody holds up that gun, what's the positive intent? That person's intent is trying to survive. Now, it may not be affecting you positive, but there is a positive intent. And I'll tell you what, with friends, you want to assume <laughs> That if your friend does anything, that there's a positive intent towards you as well, even though if you can't see it. Because if you assume that somebody has a positive intent and you expect that, people tend to respond to that accordingly. Third core belief around communication. People do the best they can with the resources they have. People always do the best they can with the resources they have. Doctors. It means if your staff's out there and they're not doing the job, instead of thrashing them, which most of you don't anyway, but instead of wanting to, 
you might want to stop and think to yourself, this, this group of people, they're working their tail off for me. They're doing the best they can with the resources they have. Does that mean you can't talk to them about getting better? No. Just don't judge quite so quickly. You know, maybe there's some things going on you don't know. Maybe you're not aware of some of the stuff they're trying to deal with today. And vice versa. Staff, take a look at your doctor. And realize if your doctor's a little stressed right now, maybe he's doing the best he can with the resources he has. Maybe there's some stress in just keeping the practice together you don't even know and you don't have on your back that that doctor's trying to deal with right now. And right, maybe right now they're not treating as well as they could, or maybe they're not doing something the way you want them to have it done. But maybe there's something else going on there. Maybe they're doing the best they can in the moment with the resources they have. Now, that doesn't mean stop there. It just means appreciate where people are. And below that, write down this. There are no unresourceful people. There are only unresourceful states. There are no unresourceful people. There are only unresourceful states. So we've all had times when we weren't being very resourceful. Now, does that mean we're unresourceful people? No, we're probably just in a lousy state. Have you ever gone to lunch and had somebody gone to like a little restaurant or diner or something and you walk into the place and waiter or waitress walks up and he goes, what do you want? You've done nothing? How many have had this wonderful experience? Now, when this happens, you probably think to yourself, oh, this person's doing the best they can with the resources they have, right? <laughs> Is that what you normally do? No. No. He's, I'll tell you what I want. I want your manager. Bring him here now. I'll tell you what I want. Oh, you think, ah, no tip, no tip. Ah, yeah. <laughs> or better yet, a penny, a penny, a penny. Yeah, yeah. Do any of those things get you better service? Yes or no? Do they make you feel better? Yes or no? Maybe for a moment. Right, do they make you feel better about yourself? Yes or no? No. See, the only way to help this person not make them wrong, is this person a mean, evil, sinister person who hates other human beings? Yes or no? Maybe. <laughs> but probably not. Probably what's happened is this person is not being very resourceful because they're not in a very resourceful way. What if you help them to change their state? You think they might treat you differently? Yes or no? So, by the way, have you ever treated somebody in a not so great way because you weren't in a great state? Yes or no? Better believe it. So what you want to do is you want to have a little more compassion. When somebody gets intense with you, instead of reacting, which we all do at times, you want to stop for a second and say, this person's doing the best they can with the resources they have. They don't have any resources right now because they're in a lousy state. Let me change their state. So how could you do that? You can do it a zillion ways. Break their pattern. You know, they start to go like this stuff. What do you want? You to smile. <laughs> what do you want? I want to see your teeth. What? Why? Because I like smiles. Ransom completely out of their mind. They won't know what's going on at that point. Besides that, I'm a dentist, and if you don't treat me well, I'm coming with my drill. Is it safe? <laughs> I'm a doctor. I want to take care of you. See, what you need to do is break their pattern. Or somebody says, can I help you? Or what do you want? And you say, nothing right now. Because it's obvious they're overworking you. Why don't you, like, take everybody else's order first, and when you have time, come take mine. <laughs> What are they likely to do? You're going to go, oh, man, I'm sorry. And what, when people notice they've done something like this, if you treat them good, if you treat somebody else well, even though they treat you lousy, they'll remember that, won't they? It buys a lot, doesn't it? Because in the future, they'll remember you treated me well even when I treated you lousy. Whoa. And boy, people remember that, too, in a relationship. They remember it a lot. So if you treat them well, they'll go, oh, I'm really sorry. And what will they usually do? They'll probably tell you why they treated you lousy, and they'll talk about how they're in a lousy what, usually? Stay. Isn't that true? They'll say, well, I'm really sorry, it's not about you, it's just I had this fight with a cook, or these other people didn't tip me, or I'm really stressed out, or I got too many tables. Is that kind of things they say? Sure. They say, let me take your order. And you say, no, no. Take everybody else's first, and when you have time, then take mine. No, I really want to take your order. Okay. <laughs> what kind of service are you going to get? What kind of service? Excellent. Excellent service, because you broke their pattern. They're going to appreciate that. They're also going to appreciate you treating them well, even though... You didn't have to. If you want to see an awesome clip of a young Tony Robbins, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. All you have to do to persuade someone is do two simple things. One, you have to identify, and ideally, the first step you're going to do is you're going to identify the buying state.